Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time,
Megatron. wants to crown Christ forever. Amen. So, I did the great judgment morning. The great judgment morning. What one needs?
to this shall we bars for prayer our precious heavenly father lord we thank you lord for this morning grace given to us lord after the ninth battle to be here this moment a special place lord described by david and we have come here, Lord, on the expectation. And we're trusting our Lord, no matter, Lord, our various needs, we will leave here not ever the same. May your presence lift us. Lord, take us higher and higher and higher. And more making us, Lord, getting us ready towards the home going. Shaking us, oh God, for all lukewarmness. Because you're not called the bride to be in Laodicea. God help us that we really be in the bright material. Stay in line, getting ourselves ready, Lord. Oh God, give us grace, Lord. Courage, love, ability to press on this battle. And we thank you, Lord, for this offering. We ask the Lord you sanctify the offering and let it serve its intent purpose, Lord. As many who have come to your presence sick, not feeling fine this morment, no matter, we pray that Lord will book the hand of the enemy. Let your presence heal the Lord and revive and strengthen them. And they leave this place, leave this place, Lord, rejoicing. Grant it, Father. We have this in Jesus' name. Amen. We call, please, take your seats. We call upon a song to encourage the bride, Sister Mary Bottier. Rapture day is drawing now. Uh, where will you be? Amen. The question for you. We continue on. 174. What it says.
Second Peter chapter 3, and want to read from verse 10 to 13. Second Peter chapter 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Second Peter chapter 3. Let's read from verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. We want to read verses 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first seven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold! The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. I 
are passed away. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Shall be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. So once again, God bless you for coming to the service. We are pleased to see everyone in our midst. And whilst we are seated, uh, make sure you've got your marks on. Uh, those, those are just rules and regulations uh, from the state authorities. If, if, if you feel tired and you want to go out and get some fresh air, you are liberty to just uh, take a, a step out and just get some fresh air. But whilst you are within the auditorium, we want to encourage everyone to make sure that you've got your face marks on. Praise the Lord. We thank God for last Sunday service, and I trust that as we go through these things, be encouraging you, we are encouraging ourselves that we have not just believed any ordinary message, but the message that we have believed is thus says the Lord. And thus says the Lord never ever fails. Amen. Hallelujah. God has sent a message to us in this age that we are living in. And there's no delusion about it. Is the absolute certainty of the word of God in this hour that we are living in. So believe it with all of your heart. Believe it with everything that is within you. Amen. Because heaven and earth will fail by God's word. Hallelujah. And his message to us in this our day, hallelujah, will stand the test of time. Amen and amen. So this morning, uh, we want to continue with our teaching and study of our future home. Praise the name of the Lord. The last two times that we look at it, there were two things that we established, and I want to go back to those two things. So that as we carry on with the studies, hallelujah, you bear those things in mind. The first thing we did establish was a principle, hallelujah, that the purpose of God can never be defeated. Praise the Lord. And so, as we study, I want you to keep this principle in your thoughts. That the purpose of God can never be defeated. So, whatever God decided to do at the beginning, praise the name of the Lord, that can never be defeated. It doesn't matter how many times the devil tries to come in and appear to derail the purpose of God, but the purpose of God can never be defeated. Amen. So we read this quotation from the message, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. Praise the Lord. Just a minute, I'll just send it to you on, on, on your... Amen. Our God is still alive. He's a great king that we serve. Amen. Just a minute, I need to send my PowerPoint. Have you received it? No. Okay, let, let me call the quotation and then you can see, you can just get it on the screen for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. But in the message, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. Uh, the prophet preached it in 1958. In paragraph 31, this is what the prophet said. God's purpose can never be defeated. Praise the name of the Lord. And so remember, we talk about two key principles. That the purpose of God can never be defeated. And that the first decision of God is perfect in itself. So the God's purpose at the beginning. It doesn't matter whether sin has come into the world. Hallelujah. That purpose of God can never be defeated. And whatever decision God made at the beginning... That decision is perfect in itself. So in the message, I know my Redeemer liveth, the prophet said in paragraph 31, 
God's purpose can never be defeated. There is nothing can defeat it. So how happy ought we to be today? Resting upon that beautiful revelation of the word of the living God that there's neither things present nor things that can come. There is no sickness, no sorrow, no death, no perils, no nothing can separate us from the purpose of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. That nothing can separate us from the purpose of the living God. Hallelujah. What God has imagined in his mind, what God has purposed in his heart to bring to pass, there is no demon, there is no power, there is nothing can ever separate God's great, immortal, eternal plan. It must be as God has said. Praise the Lord. We're talking about our future hope. And we said that what we call our future hope, hallelujah, something that we are looking forward to, God has already established it. So we want to go back to what God did establish in the beginning because if God had a purpose in the beginning, that purpose can never be defeated. Praise the Lord. And then we also said that the first decision of God is perfect because God is infinite. God is not ever learning. Praise the name of the Lord. Year after year, tomorrow I will learn something new to make myself better. Hallelujah. Next year, if the Lord time we have learned something new, we increase in our experiences. But our God is not like that. He knows the end from the beginning. So when he makes a decision, that decision is perfect in itself. It cannot be added to he cannot be taken away from. So listen to this quote the prophet said in the message, The Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. And in paragraph 72, the prophet said, We can make a decision. And next year, we can think better. That's talking about us human beings. We got a better idea of it next year. God can't praise the Lord. So even as we talk about our future home, we want to go back and see what was the first home that God built for his children. Because that decision God made to build that home for his children, that decision is perfect. It cannot be improved upon. It cannot be added on to. That is the revelation God has sent to us in this our day that we are living in. God can't. He's infinite. His first decision is perfect. Nothing can move it. I can learn more. We are finite. I can learn more. You can learn more. But God can't learn more. He is perfect to begin with. And therefore, his first decision Rest your soul upon it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Rest your soul upon it. Because his purpose and his decisions, hallelujah, his purpose cannot be defeated when he said that I will make man. After he has created the whole heavens and the earth and he made the decision that I will create man, that man will have dominion over all that I have created, that decision still stands true today. Hallelujah. What he has purpose in his heart, it can never and it will never be defeated. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're speaking about our future home. And it's important to talk about it. Hallelujah. Especially in this time that we are living in. When all the signs around us are showing that our home going is near. 
Amen. Our homegoing church is near and is close at hand. If we look at the, some of the things that we looked at last week, it should, it should stir up your heart. Hallelujah. It, it, it should make you a happy person. If you've been in the air for like 11 hours, you are traveling from Accra to Washington. Hallelujah. And then the pilot said, we are beginning to descend. Amen. Then you know that your flight is coming to an end. So gradually you know that you are going to land soon. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is the time that we are living in. The thing that we have been talking about. Hallelujah. What the scripture has promised us. Like Abraham. When God promised him Isaac. But when the time drew near, Jehovah came down himself and revealed himself to Abraham and showed Abraham a few things and said that according to the time of life, Sarah is going to have a son. You call his name Isaac. He has been waiting for 24 years, but when the time drew near, God came on the scene. And we have been waiting for several thousands of years because he promised that he's coming back. But we are privileged to be living in that hour, in that time, in that dispensation, hallelujah, where the things that will usher in his coming, we are living witnesses of those things. It's time to draw near to God. This world is not our home. Peter says that we are pilgrims and strangers. Paul tells us in Hebrews 13 that here we have no continuing city. We look for one to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Our future home. Amen. And then just to go back to a few things we touched on in the first two services. Again, we read from the message fellowship by redemption, where the prophet was straightening out the misconceptions people have when we talk about our future hope. Because people imagine houses, that is what we are used to, the houses that we live in. And so listen to what the prophet said in the message fellowship by redemption. Fellowship by Redemption, paragraph 109. The prophet said, I have never believed that heaven was a place where there's a bunch of buildings, a bunch of houses up there made with mortar, dubbed with paper, paint on the wall. I have never believed that a supernatural being will have to live in a literal house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we are used to living in houses. When we talk about our future home, and when we read some scripture, we have our own understanding of what that will be. Praise the name of the Lord. And the prophet of God is telling us, that, I have never believed that. Mortal people, because we need shelter from all the elements of the weather, so we have houses which we build with bricks, and mortar to live in. But as immortal beings, praise the name of the Lord, as immortal beings, we don't need these fiscal what? houses. Oh, hallelujah. I have never believed that a supernatural being will have to live in a literal house. I believe that when Jesus spoke in John 14 and said, in my father's house is many mansions. He made a body a dwelling place. Hallelujah. In my father's house are many mansions. Nobody will take your dwelling place. Nobody will take my dwelling place because God has already prepared it. That is what Paul said. Hallelujah. In the book of Corinthians, in this earthly tabernacle, we must get to the place where we understand the biblical terminologies. Paul said that if this earthly tabernacle were dissolved, it's buried, it's laid to rest, 
Hallelujah. We have won already. We have won already. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our future home. Amen and amen. For the scriptures, the paragraph 110, for the scriptures verify the same thing and say, if this early tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting, you see? Mortal being is the only one who lives in mortal habitations. Don't you thank God for a prophet messenger. As simple as it may be, this is the Bible truth. Mortal beings live in mortal habitations. Immortal beings live in immortal habitations. Then the place we go to until we return back is not a place of brick and mortar and clay or precious stones or jewels. It's a place of condition that we move out of this dimension that we live into. We live into another dimension. It's a house, a tabernacle, a dwelling place. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want everybody to get it. It's going to be a slow journey, but we're going to get there in the end. It's a house. A house is a shelter. Hallelujah. A place that you dwell in is a shelter. So we see that at the beginning, hallelujah, God, that immortal spirit, when he made man, he made man in his own image. These are things we talked about, but I just want to refresh our mind before I take the next step. Amen. Man, what the first man was a spirit man. And that is why in Genesis it said that even though he has made man, in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible said there was no man to till the earth. Because that man was a spirit man. Hallelujah. But in order for that spirit man to be able to interact with this physical earth that was around him, God took the dust of the earth and built a house. Hallelujah. And built a tabernacle. And then he took the spirit man and placed him in that house. So this body that we see, hallelujah, that is the first house that man, the spirit man, came to live inside. It wasn't brick and mortar, but it was something that God made himself. It wasn't a man-made house, but it was a house that God built himself. He took the dust of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The dust of the earth, they never age. Is that right? The dust of the earth, they never age. They never corrupt. They, nothing happened. It, it's still what it is. How we came to meet it, that is how it is still it is. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to just start thinking about some of these things. The dust of the earth, it never ages, it never dies. What it is from the beginning, it is still the same today. Praise the Lord. So he took part of the dust of the earth and formed, praise the Lord, a house and took the spirit man and placed the spirit man in that body. So this body that we know, hallelujah, the Bible in certain places call it the tabernacle. In other places call it the temple, hallelujah, the house. It became the dwelling place. It became the shelter for the spirit man. So that the spirit man in this house can now interact with the things that God has made around him. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So you can read all of this. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. Amen. And the second thing I want you to note, and I want these two things to be very important as we go on in our study. So man had his own place that he was living. But God did not end there. Hallelujah. In Genesis 2, after he has built a house for man, the priest man to dwell in, again, the Bible says, in the east world of Eden, God prepared a place. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 2. Let's read from verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. And the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up mist from the earth, and water the whole face of the earth. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hallelujah. Verse 8, And the Lord planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there he put man whom he has formed. Praise the Lord. So he has built, he has taken part of the earth and fashioned a house, a tabernacle, a temple. The spirit man comes to live in that body. So now the spirit man has got two arms, two legs, eyes, and he can interact with the rest of the earth. But God did not live in that way. Upon the face of the earth that he has created, he also prepared a place. Praise the Lord. A place east of the garden of Eden. He planted a garden. And he said, man, this is now your city. Hallelujah. You can dwell in this place. You can have this home city for yourself. This will be your hometown. So yes, the whole earth was there, but God prepared a place on this earth. Not in the heavens, but he prepared a place on this earth. Praise the Lord. And he said, man, you can live in this place. So wherever man went, wherever he went to Rome, he always had a place that he could come back to. And when God was looking for him, he knew where to come to. He knew the home that he has given this man. So in addition to having his own house, that the spirit was living in, God also prepared a place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as we talk about our future home, I want you to get these two things. There is a future house that this earthly tabernacle, when it's dissolved, there's one already waiting. But when all things have been made anew, God also is going to have a place, a city, on this earth that that man is going to live in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When all is done and the redemption has come to a full completion, this mortal body puts on immortality. It can no longer die. Hallelujah. But on this earth, somewhere again, like God prepared for Adam and God in eastward of Eden, 
that Adam could go and rest in the cool of the evening. When all is done, somewhere on this earth also, God is going to prepare a place. Because that was his first decision. Because that was his purpose, and it can never be defeated. And that decision of his is perfect. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Isn't he a wonderful God? But thank God for the message of the hour. Amen. Thank God for the message of the hour. People who spend money and go to Bible schools and theological schools and whatnot. Hallelujah. But it took God with a seven great person. To bring this divine mystery truth. Praise the Lord. To us in this our day. So God also prepared a place. It's not a place like we know people are building cities like Dubai and what not. What not. Remember it was after the fall. That the cities we see today began to be built. Genesis chapter 4. Praise the Lord. And the cities we see today, the original architects, hallelujah, were the children of Cain. Genesis chapter 4, verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Praise the Lord. So Cain's life, they began to build the cities that we know today. But before the fall, God has prepared his own place. Hallelujah. And if it was a place prepared by God, believe you me, it would be wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. It will be perfect. Hallelujah. I'm sure the streets were made of gold. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. There was no death there, but God prepared a place for Adam. Where Adam could roam. Where Adam could walk. Where Adam could call that, this is my city. It wasn't built by man. It was built by God himself. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So like we've said, the purpose of God cannot be defeated. The first decision of God is perfect. Hallelujah. But when sin came in, I'm just trying to build a picture. So everything God has made, we've got a spirit man. He takes the spirit man. He takes part of this earth, forms a house, hallelujah, and put that spirit man in the house. And so he becomes a being that has got two arms, two legs, hallelujah, can walk around, hallelujah. He wasn't like the spirit, hallelujah, that was leading the animals. Because that is what God said happened at the beginning. That's what the prophet said. He said, just that we are led by the spirit of God. In the beginning, the spirit man was how God was also leading the animals. Praise the Lord. But after the man is now in a physical being, hallelujah, he's got a body, he's got a spirit, he's got a soul, a free house person. I don't want to just move away from my message, hallelujah. But that is why when God showed the tabernacle, remember the tabernacle for Moses to build, it had three parts. There was the outer court. There was the inner court, and there was the holy of holies, wherein dwell and go. And so we also have three house person. The body, the spirit, the soul, and that is the dwelling place of God. He habits himself within your soul. 
That is where God places his seed. The control tower that he can interact with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, just get a picture. The purpose of God cannot be defeated. Hallelujah. His first decision is perfect. So, this decision he made at the beginning, everything was perfect. Then came in sin. And so when sin came in, hallelujah, what God has purposed in himself, man fell. And it appeared, hallelujah, it appeared that the purpose of God has been defeated. Because man has fallen. God has made man to have dominion over the over the earth, to subdue the earth, and now man has fallen from where God wanted him to be. So it appears that the purpose of God is to be defeated. But never, God's purpose can never be defeated. So let me read this quotation from the message, the masterpiece, preached in 1965, 1964. The masterpiece, I want to read from paragraph 55. The purpose of God can never be defeated. But when sin came in, it appeared, it seemed like what God intended at the beginning, man has lost his way. Paragraph 55, the masterpiece. Now notice then, this masterpiece, when Satan got a hold of it, the deceiver broke through the walls. He marred this masterpiece. Because that way, because that's the way he did it. How did he do it? I will go in more, I will go in more detail of it. This masterpiece was walled by the word of God, by God, God's word. And the masterpiece itself of the family was fortified by this word. But the broken part that was broke off of this original went out beyond that wall. It gives Satan a chance to mar it. Hallelujah. And now, as you know, what I believe on those things, of course, we know the serpent seed and all of those things. Brother Brown, they will talk about that. I wouldn't have to say that. But the masterpiece was broke. So this man that God made, because the Bible said that when God finished creation, he looked and he saw that everything that he has made was good. Praise the Lord. Everything that he has made was good. But when sin came in, the masterpiece was broken. And it appeared, I keep using the word appeared. Hallelujah. That God's original purpose is being derailed. Hallelujah. But the masterpiece was broke. Paragraph 56. But the great sculptor, when he has seen the fall of his family, the masterpiece, I love this piece, he wasn't willing just to leave it lay there. It appeared his purpose was shattered. His God, he could have created a new one. He could have just completely annihilated, hallelujah, what he has done, destroyed it completely, he was spoken it out of existence and done something new. But he had a purpose that this one that I have made, this is the way it is going to be. Hallelujah. And so when sin came in, the masterpiece was broken, but the sculptor, oh, hallelujah, but the sculptor, 
he wasn't willing just to leave it laid there face down and ring. Oh, this one is beyond repairs. So let's forget about it. This one is beyond this. Let's forget about it. But that wasn't God because his purpose cannot be defeated. He wanted to prove that. That when he purposed in himself to do something, it shall stand. And no amount of demons from the bottomless pit of God can ever, or of hell can ever derail the purpose of God. Amen. He went to work immediately to build it up again. Oh, glory to God. I'm sure you enjoyed all the series on the Kingsman Redeemer. How God became our kinsman. How he was willing. He was able. Hallelujah. He was qualified to be a real kinsman. He was willing. He had the ability to redeem Ruth. Because he was a kinsman Boaz to Naomi. And he wasn't willing that people would ridicule Naomi. Hallelujah. If you watch that movie, Ruth, when Boaz came, Naomi, how can you live in this dilapidated house? How can you come back to Bethlehem and you not even let me know? Naomi said, oh, I mean, you know, everybody has their own price. So what about your own price? Come on, Naomi. You are not an ordinary Jew. I am your kinsman, Boaz. I am wealthy. I am able. Praise the Lord. And so when man fell, when the masterpiece of God appeared to be destroyed, he went to work again. Oh, don't you love God? He went to work again. He didn't say, let me completely annihilate this. Let me completely destroy this and do something new from scratch. That will have defeated his own purpose. Praise the Lord. He went to work immediately to build it up again. He wasn't willing that it should perish. Lay there like that all the time. Why? Because he is God and he will not be defeated. Oh, hallelujah. So when God said, let us make the earth, let there be light, and every one of those things he made, it was perfect. When he said, I will make man to be the God of this earth, it was a perfect one. When he said, man will subdue this earth, it was a perfect decision. When he purposed that it was only man, somebody that looks like him, that can have dominion over this earth, that purpose of God can never be defeated. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Because he is God and he will not be defeated. So he went to work immediately to begin to build again onto his own image a man. Praise the Lord. Because he's finite. The devil did not get the whole picture. The devil did not know all of it. But God in his great mystery plan, in him, he had attributes. And one of those attributes was to be a redeemer. And how can he be a redeemer when something is not law to be bought back? But Satan did not know Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't know that. And that is why the prophet said, in the message, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. That God has three full purpose. Hallelujah. One was to reveal himself. And he did that through Christ Jesus. When he revealed who he was. The second one was to have preeminence. 
amongst his people. And he did that, hallelujah, when the Holy Ghost came and lived in the believers. And that way God had preeminence among his people. And the third one, to restore the kingdom back to where it fell from. The devil didn't know this. That even in the midst of the fall was going to be made manifest the attribute of divine love. That in the midst of the fall was going to make the attributes of who a real redeemer is. So all that he did at the beginning, praise the Lord. Let's go to Christ in the mystery of God revealed, 1963, paragraph 154. Praise the Lord. We are speaking about our future hope. Amen. Before we read this, let me read the scriptures coming to mind. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes, after Proverbs chapter 1. Let's read out what, what Solomon said in verse 9. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. Praise the Lord. The thing that has been. So if you are looking for something new, just go back and see what God did at the beginning. It will give you a revelation of what God is going to do in the future. The thing that had been is that we shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3 of the same book, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Praise the Lord. Whatever God does, oh my. Hallelujah. Whatever God does, it shall be forever. Think about that. Nothing can be put to it nor anything taken from it. Because all that we see is a manifestation of the spoken word. And that word is God himself. So he said at the end of the book, cares be any man who be, who what? Add to this or take away what? From it. So all of us, every child of God, it's only a manifestation of God's spoken word. You cannot be added to. So don't go and add lipsticks to your face. You cannot be added to. Don't go and add the fashions of the world to it. You are the original creation that God has made in his own image. Don't add to it. Don't try to take away from it. Today, they, 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 they put on their own fingernails. Color, red, green, blue, whatever it is. Some even take their own eyelashes and they put man-made what? Eyelashes. Praise the name of the Lord. It's all happening out there. Isn't the word of God wonderful? Amen. So let's go. And God does it, hallelujah, that men should fear before him. Verse 15, that which has been is now, 
and that which is to and that which is to be hath already been. Oh my. That which is to be hath already been. And God requires that which is past. Praise the Lord. Today we, we, we always think about something new or something this or something. But Solomon is telling us whatever we expect it has already been. Because when God did it in Genesis, it was perfect. Sin just came in to derail it. Hallelujah. But God's purpose is to take us back. Christ is the mystery of God revealed, paragraph 154. Talking about the great mystery plan of God. First, to express himself completely, God in Christ. Second, to have preeminence by this in his church, which is the body, the bride. So he could have the preeminence to express himself through them, all right. And thirdly, remember, this was the mystery plan that God had in his mind before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. The great mystery plan that was hidden under the seventh seal. But God, in his time, in the days of the voice of the seven angel, the mystery of God should be finished. And so God, in this hour, through the prophet messenger, revealing to us what that great mystery plan is. And thirdly, to restore the kingdom to its rightly position. That fell by sin by Adam. That fell by sin by the first Adam. Back to where he walked in the cool of the evening with his people, talked with them, for a fellowship with them. To restore, to bring back the original. Take us back to the original, what it was before the fall. So as we talk about our future home, let's go back and see what God did in the beginning. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to what God established in the beginning. He gives us the picture. Paragraph 172. Now notice again what his threefold purpose manifests himself in Jesus Christ to come into the body by Jesus Christ to have preeminence to what? Restore back Eden. Praise the Lord. Have you got it on the screen? Paragraph 172. Amen. Paragraph 172. Amen. Notice again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His threefold purpose goes on. And what was the third one? Restore back Eden. Bring back that which lost. Hallelujah. That was the only thing out of order. He has revealed himself in Christ. The Holy Ghost has come down. Hallelujah. Leave it in the believer so he can have preeminence in his bride. There's only one thing out of order. Taking it back to Eden. All the rest of the things was in order. But now there's only one out of order. Oh, hallelujah. Taking us back back into Eden. Taking us back to the beginning where this body was immortal. Where he had a place eastward of Eden. Oh, hallelujah. 
if God prepared it. I thought you go to certain places, and when you see the gardens, parks, and parks and gardens have died, and there's just some beauty about gardens. When you see the flowers, the roses, and all of it, 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 there's some peace and tranquility. And you sit in the midst of the garden, and maybe the various birds coming, the different birds coming, and coming to sing at various times. You wish you don't leave that place. Praise the Lord. But if God prepared it, Brother Kufu, it's going to be wonderful. Hallelujah. I say if Jehovah prepared a garden, the only thing out of order now is the restoration back to Eden. And God, who has begun a good work, will bring it to an end. Oh, hallelujah. I say Jehovah, who has begun the good work, who has revealed himself through Christ, who has now, is now having preeminence in his bride, through the Holy Ghost revealing himself in the church, is going to fulfill that terrible purpose. Amen. Restore back to Eden. Bring back that which was lost. That was the only thing out of order. All the rest of the things in order. Praise the Lord. That was the only thing out of order. All the rest have already taken place. He's been here, Christ, without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness because God was made manifest in the flesh. When they saw him, they thought he was just the man from Nazareth, the man from Galilee, but he was more than that. He was Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the name of the Lord. Sunday after Christmas, I preached a message at Hobo, and I enjoyed it myself. Because I've never talked about it before. I talk about Emmanuel, the original Christmas. Praise the Lord. Emmanuel, the original Christmas. God with us. But today we have lost that revelation. Today we have lost that revelation. But that was the first mystery, God revealing himself. God manifesting himself. And then he said, look, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come back unto you. And when he went, he sent the Holy Ghost to come back into the body of the believer. Why? Because he wanted to have preeminence among his people. And he still have the preeminence today when we yield to him, when he becomes the Lord in our lives. When we open all the doors in our life to him, he comes in to have the preeminence. And so one more thing is left. One more thing is out of order, but it has to come back into order. And that is to restore Eden back to where it was. So remember, whatever God does, it shall be forever. It cannot be added on to. It cannot be taken away from. And if there's anything God is interested in at all, it's what he already did at the beginning. So remember, he made a house, a body, and placed man in it. Then after that, he prepared a place. Hallelujah. That he said, Adam, I know you are living in your own house, but I've got a wonderful place for you. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I am done, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be there also. So when you read, I'm going to prepare a place for you, we think so far away. Hallelujah. So far away. 
praise the Lord. But as we go through, we see that everything is going to take place right here. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, the meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. The meek shall inherit the earth. This is our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Isn't he wonderful? Praise the Lord. So let's get back to our key scriptures now. And why they appear to be the misconception. In 2 Peter, hallelujah, it said, the key word I want to know, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away. That was the word, the key word, the heavens shall pass away. When we go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Praise the Lord. And so because it talk about pass away, we often bring God's word into our human own interpretation. But remember, God is his own interpreter. If God says anything, he interprets it himself. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So the prophet said, when God says anything, God is his own interpreter. When he said, let there be light, he didn't need anybody to describe what light was. Light just came. The spoken word is the manifestation, or when the word is manifested, that is the interpretation of what God has said. So when he said a virgin shall conceive, the interpretation, a virgin did conceive. When he said he shall be born in Bethlehem of Judah, the interpretation, the word came to pass that he was born in Bethlehem of Judah, although they were living in Nazareth. They had to travel to Bethlehem. God made sure that all the conditions were set in motion to get them to go to Bethlehem so that what he has said will come in the message, what shall we do with this Jesus called Christ? 1964, January, paragraph 81. The prophet says, God don't need any interpreter. God is his own interpreter. Why am I quoting this? So that if the Bible says it will pass away, I do not want to bring my interpretation of what the pass away is, but let's go back to the scripture and let the scripture tell us what the pass away means. And that is why people lose the Godhead. That's why people lack the revelation of the Godhead. They say, oh, here was Jesus pray, uh, my, or say, my, my father, my father. Yes, Jesus talked about my father. But in their mind, because they, their father is different from them. That is the way they think. But if they will allow the scripture to speak for itself. Because Philip, Thomas, every one of them, every day you are talking about your father. John 14, show us the father. And that is all we need. You know, Jesus was surprised. He said, my goodness. I should show you the Father. Have I, have I been so long with you and you don't know me? Because before he became a son, as I said, he was the everlasting Father. So let the scripture speak for itself. 
So if the Bible says the heaven and earth will pass away, hallelujah, let the Bible speak for itself what it means by passing away. So God is his own interpreter. God is his own interpreter. That is, that's what the trouble of it is today. We've got too many, too many man-made inter interpreters. God can interpret himself. His own vindication of his word is the interpretation. Hallelujah. His vindication of his word is his interpretation. In the message the prophet preached, 1964, God is his own interpreter. February the 5th. 6402.05, God is his own interpreter. The prophet said, God is his own interpreter. He don't need anybody to interpret for him. He does his own interpre interpreting. Who is the man that can interpret God? God is his own interpreter. Now, Peter speaking here, we find out that in the beginning, when God said, let there be light, and there was light, that's the interpretation to it. When God said anything and it was manifested, then that's God's interpretation. That's his words, that his words, his, his words, right? See, when he said, let there be light, that was in his thinking first. Before there was such a thing as light. When he said, let there be light, light sprang into the skies. That's the interpretation. Nobody has to interpret that. For God says so, and there it was. When God speaks and is manifested, that is the interpretation of his word. Amen. So, the two scriptures. In 2 Peter and Revelation chapter 21 are speaking of the same thing. And I keep quoting the prophet because the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. The interpretation of the word comes to the prophet. Those of us, by God's will, have, have privilege of going to school and, and doing research and all of those things. If you are not the original, hallelujah, when you do your research, you, you cite references. References of authorities that have said something earlier. But when you find something new, you make your own conclusion that by my research, A, B, C, D, so, so, and so, because nobody has found it. So you also become the originator. And somebody can also quote you that from so, so, and so's research, he found an A, B, C, D. Amen. And so in this day and age that we are living in, God has got his supreme interpreter of his word. And that is the prophet messenger. He said, as the Lord God will do nothing, Amos 3, but he revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. And so God has sent one in this hour that we are living in. And we recognize him as such. And that is why we go back to him, and the word is becoming plainer. The scriptures are becoming plainer because we have got the vindicated divine interpretation of the scriptures in this hour that we are living in. Amen. So in the message, future hope, in the message, future home, paragraph 59, if you want to get that on the screen, we want to read this quotation. Praise the name of the Lord and see how far we'll be able to go. But the two of them, the two scriptures are talking about the same thing. Hallelujah. God was talking about the end product. Whereas Peter was telling us the process by which that end product was attained. Amen. So John in Revelation tells us the end product. The first seven and the first that have passed away. Amen. I 
saw a new heaven. But Peter is telling us the process. The heavens will be on fire. It will melt with fervent heat. And all these things will pass away. Praise the name of the Lord. And I mentioned the key word there is pass away. But let's just read this quotation. And then we'll go to what that key word is. Amen. Paragraph 59. So John explains the change. No, let, let, let's go. Uh, John explains, uh, right, uh, he, uh, let me just jump. Peter explains the change, okay? John said, I saw new heavens and a new earth. First heavens and the first earth was passed away. There was no more sea. I, John, saw the holy city coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. But we turn back to 2 Peter now to find out. Peter explains how this process will come about. Amen. Paragraph 65. By these passages, one might think or be led rather to believe that the whole planet of this earth will be destroyed. I will make a new heaven and a new earth sea, that the heavens will be gone, the earth will be gone, completely annihilated, completely destroyed. And that is when we read it in our denominational era, and those are the thoughts that we have, completely destroyed. God is going to create something new, hallelujah. That is the understanding. In our denominational areas. Praise the Lord. But thank God for the message of the hour. That when you know that the purpose of God can never be defeated. That the decision of God is perfect in its thought. And that we are going back to Aden. Hallelujah. Then you understand what does it mean when the Bible says that these things will pass away. Hallelujah. Paragraph 66. It is only the atmospheres around it, the sin that is upon the earth, that will be destroyed. Now we realize that the heavens means the atmospheres above. Paragraph 67, what does it do? Then these titles and sickness and death and politics and sinful man and sinful woman Evil spirits will all be gone away and annihilated. See, it has to be done that way because we are going to live here. Notice status, gems, sickness, all things will be completely taken away. All its existence, that's in the earth now, man-made system, politics, sin, all kinds of evils, spirit, that, world, that the world is contaminated with. All the heavens above uh, us in here is contaminated with evil spirit. All this exists in the heavens or the atmospheres and the earth, which is now. The earth holds those things, but it wasn't made for that purpose. Sin caused it to be like that. Praise the Lord. Passing away. Amen. So the prophet goes on. In paragraph 175, and I think I'm going to close on this note when I come to talk about we as human beings. Heavens and earth will pass away. Now this word means passing from one form to another. Hallelujah. The heavens and the earth will pass away. It means passing from one form to another. And remember, praise the name of the Lord. But he used the word new, and a new heaven, and a new earth. So we want to look at what happened to us. Because we are also, hallelujah, we are part of that redemption. If we can understand what has happened to us, praise the name of the Lord, then we'll appreciate what God is going to do to this earth. So let's go to the book of Corinthians. Second 
2 Corinthians chapter 5. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because the same word, pass away, is used here. It's a Greek word. You can go and read the message. Where Abraham talks about it, it's, it's, it's a Greek word, parachomia. What it means is pass from one form to another, transformed. So Paul says in Romans 12, be not conformed, but be ye transformed. It's a transformation, a renewal, a regeneration. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise the Lord. God did not take you and make you a new creation. He didn't speak a new uh, brother Atta Hansen into existence. Hallelujah. He didn't speak a new sister Rosemary into existence. But something supernatural takes place. Hallelujah. That transforms you. So the Bible says if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. But it's the same two arms you have. It's the same two eyes that you had before you received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Before you repented. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you were baptized by immersion, hallelujah, in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctified, where the old desires were all taken away. And then the Holy Ghost baptism, the baptism of fire, comes in and cleanses away all the old nature. But it's the same being. But the Bible says you are a new creation. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. Hallelujah. All things the same pass away. The heavens and earth will pass away. When you, as an individual, because of sin you were falling in your old nature, but when he picked you up, you went through the process of the new birth. Justification. Hallelujah. Like this thing lying here, and because I need to use it to clean my face, so I pick it up. That is justification. I picked it up, but I've not decided what I want to do with it first. But because I pick it up, what do I do? I put it through a washing machine or I wash it to get all the dirt away from it. Hallelujah. Cleanse it. That is sanctification. And white has been cleansed. It is now put here to be used in service in cleaning our faces. But it speaks from somewhere. And when it is speak, there's a purpose for it. And then, before you can use it, you wash it. You get rid of all the, the dirt and the germs and everything. And it's ironed nicely and it's, it is put here. But when we start using it to wipe the sweat of our faces, we are now putting it in service. So that is the new birth. You hear the gospel, something pricks your heart, you make a decision, I want to serve God by faith. You believe the thing is justification. Hallelujah. And then the blood of Calvary, hallelujah, cleanses us from all our unrighteousness. Washing of water by the word completes circumcision, taking away all the desires of the former world. And when that has happened, then God himself sees the vessel ready to be filled. So he pours a portion of himself, the Holy Ghost, into you. So the vessel that is clean and set aside is now filled with the Holy Ghost and is ready for service. But the Bible says you are a new creation. All things 
are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Praise the Lord. All things are passed away. How did he do it? It was done through the new birth. Justification, sanctification, and then the Holy Ghost fire comes down. And when the Holy Ghost fire comes to the individual, it completely burns away all the old nature. It takes it completely away. And God comes to dwell. And so the scripture we read, it says it comes down from heaven as a bride adorned for what? Her husband. And when he has cleansed the earth, so the same process that he used to redeem man is the same process that the earth is also going to go through. Praise the Lord. But even though we have been redeemed, hallelujah, this body is still mortal. Hallelujah. But there's coming a day. There is coming a time. Oh, hallelujah. When this mortality will be clothed with immortality. Praise the Lord. Pass away. Passing from one form to another. Do you have paragraph 175 for us? Let me just read it and read a couple more scriptures. And then uh, our time is up. I'll try to run up. Praise the Lord. Heavens and earth will pass away. Now this word means passing from one form to another. It does not mean annihilation, complete destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that this earth that we are living on today will be completely annihilated, completely destroyed. And God will speak again and create a new heaven and earth. No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is that this earth will pass from one form to another. The English word will mean pass away, it's annihilated. But the Hebrew word or the Greek word here does not mean pass away. That is completely destroyed. It means from passing from one thing to another. Look, to pass from one condition to another. So currently the world is in a condition. A condition where there is sin, where there is filth, where there is all of these things. But it's going to pass from his current condition to what God made it at the beginning. Oh, hallelujah. Before the fall, this earth is going to be again passed from this current condition to what it was at the beginning, before sin came. When God could come down in the cool, of the evening and fellowship with his children. Hallelujah. When there was no tons and titles, read the fall. It was after the fall, God was telling Adam that this earth was going to have tons and titles and etc. etc. So there were things around today that were not in the original creation. But because of the fall, we see those things were around. But God is going to take this earth back to where it used to be. Today, the heavens is all polluted. There, there was no thunderstorms. There, there were no tornadoes. There were none of those things. Read Ephesians. But the Bible says that he's the prince of the power of the earth. So he gets himself into all of these things. And a nice cool breeze becomes a thunderstorm, becomes a tornado, and blows and destroys everything around it. But one of these days, it's going to pass from one form to another form. But it will not be a new form. It will be what it was at the beginning. So the word pass away. Let me read a few scriptures. Uh, Mark 13, 31. 
We read off in that scripture. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth will change from one form to another. But when it comes to the word of God, oh, hallelujah. God's word does not change form. If it says repent, it means repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It means be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's word does not change form. But heaven and earth can change. Because it is full of sin today. It is full of evil today. But there is coming a day. Hallelujah. But there is coming a day. When... Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe that is what was you were. But now something happened. Praise the Lord. And so in the next service, I'm going to talk more about what happens to us to cause the change. And then when we understand what happens to us to cause the change, we can see the earth going through the same process of being baptized, being sanctified. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost fire baptism coming upon it to cleanse it, to give the earth a new birth. That God, just like when you have received a new birth, God comes and tabernacles himself in you. Hallelujah. In Revelation, it says his tabernacle will be with men again because something has taken place. God bless us all. Shall we stand to our feet? There is come in a day. We want to sing that song. Praise the Lord.
an individual. So as we close, why don't you talk to the Lord? Lord, give me the grace. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, I want to take the way of the Lord's way with the Lord's despise you. Lord, that I will die to all the things of this world. Seeing that they will be passing away one of these days. But the Lord, you have a new order coming. Why don't you talk to the Lord? Lord, I want to be in that new order. Lord, I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Lord, I want to be transformed 
into the image of the Son of the living God. That when that morning comes, that when that morning dawns, Lord, I'll be part of it. While there's still time, while there is still time, this is the hour to talk to God and commit yourself to Him. Lord, I want to be like you. Lord, lift me up and let me stand on heaven's table. Lord. That Lord, I have no more desire for anything in this world. Let my desire be to you. Like Jesus, you said that in the, in the fall that the desire of the woman shall be for the husband. Lord, let my desire be for you. Lord, let my soul's desire be for you and you alone. It won't be long when he'll be coming for his own. It won't be long when the chariot is going to swing low and carry the bride home. Will you be in the number? When the saints go marching in. Why don't you rededicate yourself to the Lord? Why don't you pledge your allegiance to the cross of Calvary? That Lord, I'll go with you all the way to the end. That Lord, I'll walk with you all the way to the end. That Lord, I surrender all to you. Take my life and let it be holy thine. He's still Jehovah God. He still hears the prayer of his children. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, this is an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. Because when the order of the world changes, it will be those that have been changed. It will be the redeemed that will dwell on the redeemed earth. Put it off any longer. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, if you haven't walked with him into water baptism, into the pool, to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, don't put it off no longer. This is the time, this is the hour to make sure your birth is complete. That your redemption is sealed. So that when the order of this world changes, because you are already changed, you'll be found in the new order. He still hears a cry. He still hears a contract and a broken heart. Don't let him pass by you this day. Some golden daybreak is going to come. Will you ever be ready to receive him that morning when he does come? Our dear Heavenly Father, our great eternal Jehovah God, we want to thank and bless your name for this divinely revealed mystery truth that, Lord, you have brought down to us in this hour and age that we are living in. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the simplicity of your word. You've hidden it from the wise and the prudent. But you've revealed it to your children, the babes, such as will learn. Dear Lord, oh God, even as we talk on these things, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Lord, it will create a desire in our hearts, a desire and longing in our hearts, a longing to be in this new heaven and a new earth. A longing to see that all the elements of this world are passing away. And therefore, Lord, may we not hold on to any of them. But help us to surrender to you. 
Help us to yield to you. Help us to hold on onto the things that will never perish. We thank you for the preaching of the word. We thank you for the teaching of the same. I pray that these things that Lord you are teaching us, oh God, water it in the depths of our soul that it will be able to bring forth after its kind. Reproducing Jesus Christ, making him the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for taking us through the service. We give you all the praise and glory. We commit the coming week that lays ahead of us. We don't know what the day is, even the rest of this day holds. But Lord, we thank God that we know you who holds today and all eternity. So dear Lord, we just surrender to you. Take our life and let it be completely yours. Bless these words and cause us to meditate upon the same. The Heavenly Father will continue to be blessed and receive your divine presence wherever we are. We thank you. Even in Christ Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll have one more song and then we'll have the announcements to follow.